There's Hawkinson inside. Here we go. Goff from the gun to the end zone. And he's caught. Touchdown. My favorite part of that. Well, I have a lot of favorite parts to that, but my favorite part of that was when Jared Goff jumped up into Dan Campbell's arms and gave him that hug. Uh, <laughs> I love that so much because weeks prior, week five, when they suffered a, a, a last-second loss to the same team, we saw Campbell up there in tears talking about how hard the Lions play. You see something like that, you just you want something good for him, don't you? Don't you? And on the afternoon, or early afternoon here in the West Coast, on the afternoon of December 5th, 2021, Jared Goff's pass, clutch pass connected. The Lions won. Yes, the Lions actually won. <laughs> yeah, the Lions beat the Vikings 29-21. No extra point was went for because they didn't need it. Um, so that was their first win of the season. Their first win in almost a calendar year. Their last win was December 6, 2020 over the Bears. And that was in Chicago. And <laughs> it, it was just great. It was amazing. Now, let me show you something here. See this logo? That's a that's a Green Bay Packers logo. They're the same. We're in the same division as the Lions, which means as a Packers fan, I shouldn't give a flying fuck about the Lions. But for years, I've said I feel completely sorry for that team because that team has had a black cloud hovering over them for decades. I mean, one playoff win in six plus decades. They already have one win. They only have one winless season. They were the first ever 0-16 team. They weren't the first winless team, but they were the first ever 0-16 team. Because when the Bucks went winless, it was a 14-game season. Um So they went 0-16 2008. And if they hadn't won this past Sunday, odds are they're gonna have another winless season again. It would have been their second winless season in less than a decade and a half. That's too close to have such a, a, a an embarrassing rarity. And I knew Detroit was a winner's game. I picked Detroit to win this game because they're playing the Vikings. I know the Vikings. The Vikings are the biggest screw-ups in the NFL history. Some some say the Lions, some say the, the, the Bears, some say the Browns or the Jets recently. But the biggest screw-ups in the NFL history are the Minnesota Vikings. They lose to anyone, anyone. Yet they somehow beat Breeze in the playoffs. Strange. But, um... The, the Vikings are an embarrassment. They're an embarrassment to the state of Minnesota. Well, one of them. I won't get to another one. Uh, they're an embarrassment to the NFC North. Well, one of, again, one of them. They're an embarrassment to football. They are. Let's get something straight. They are. And and people... And, and I've, read, I've read comments. I watched the, the video of this a lot because it was a great moment for the Lions. But it was also a great reason for me and other fans of the Packers and real teams to laugh at the Vikings. And I read comments going, well, any given Sunday, let me tell you something. Any given, there are three things that that phrase, any given Sunday, is. A myth, a bad movie, and a lame excuse, okay? I'm a Packers fan. We would never lose to a team like that. Uh-uh. You think Rodgers would go out there, the goat that he is, and lose to a winless team December? Absolutely not. Uh-uh. We would never lose to a team like that. The, the, uh, the Kansas City Chiefs wouldn't do that. The Steelers wouldn't. You know why? Those three are real teams. The Vikings are an NFL team. They're not. The Vikings are an absolute joke. They prove it every season, and they continue to cement it. They further cemented it that Sunday when they went into Detroit and let a team who hadn't won in 364 days beat them. And to be honest, they should have lost to them before. <laughs> They should have lost the home game to them, but they got lucky. They got lucky and got a last second win. The Vikings are an embarrassment. They're only, they're only good for one thing, and that's to be two easy wins for the GOAT. But anyway, uh, now let's get to talking to talk about some actual NFL teams. 
the Cardinals for one. The Cardinals became the first team to 10 wins. Congratulations to them. Uh, even better, they got Kyle Murray and D-Hop back, DeAndre Hopkins. They beat the Bears because, of course, they did. And yes, I was one of the Packer fans, private, well, privately rooting for the, hope for the Bears to win because it would help us, but we all know the Bears. We all know the Bears couldn't beat the, the Cardinals because, like I said, because, like I said before, the Bears aren't an NFL team. Mm -mm. And they should be arrested for impersonating one. <laughs> and... And we will be the ones to lay down the judgment because they go to Lambo next week. So that's another that's another buy for the Packers. But uh, <laughs> uh, the Bucks the Bucks won in Atlanta. Well, at least Atlanta resembles something of an NFL team. They've done a few things, uh, but uh, they gave the Bucks fits. But Brady and company pulled it out. Brady and Gronk did. Gronk was all over the place. Uh, <laughs> Um, uh, I mentioned the Steelers. The Steelers survived against the, um, the Ravens, and that's because John Harbaugh, in his infinite wisdom, decided not to kick the game-tie extra point that would force overtime, even though he had the goat of kickers who could make a 50-yard, uh, field goal blindfolded. A lot of people don't, a lot of people don't get that decision, but... <laughs> Yeah, and, and and that loss knocked them out of number one. New England's leading the conference. Can you believe it? New England's leading the conference. It's like the more things change, the more they stay the same. New England's leading the AFC. Isn't that something? And they beat the, they beat the Bills on that Monday night game. They didn't even they, they didn't even throw the ball. I think they had what three pass attempts, and they beat the Bills because poor. Jo I don't know what's wrong with Josh Allen. Josh is. Did Jacksonville break him? Funny, it's always the, the, the low-level teams that seem to break these good quarterbacks. Did Jacksonville break Josh Allen? Because Josh Allen went out there totally dumbfounded against Jacksonville. And ever since then, he's had a few problems. And he didn't have a good game Monday. And that He didn't have a good game Monday, but he almost won it. But um, he could have got away with it if it weren't for those meddling Patriots. <laughs> Sorry, I had to go there. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, so Patriots, they're the real deal. They are. My goodness, seven straight wins. They increased their lead in the AFC East. They're ahead of everybody outright in the AFC. It's insane. And this is year two in the post-Brady era. My goodness, I, I, it's a hell of a story, but it, it's, a, it's a hell of a story. It really is. Another team that could be for real, the Washington football team. And I said this before privately on social media changing that name is the best thing to happen to him not because not because for the obvious reasons that it was culturally and morally wrong but look what's happened first year the first year the first the first season after they got rid of that name they won a division now granted they were seven and nine but a division title is a division title they won a division they made the playoffs they could be in the playoffs again you know what that's called? That's called good karma. When you actually do good things, when you actually do the right things, good things happen to you. They finally got their heads out of their rear ends and eliminated that backwards and racist name. What was happening to them? They made the playoffs last year, and they could be in it again. They moved past uh, uh, the Niners with that win because the Niners lost. They, they've dropped to 6-6, six six, but I think Washington has a better conference record. So Washington, at the moment, is number 6. Which means even they, which means under the old format, they be in the playoffs. Yeah, so yeah, I, I, I'm a firm believer in good karma. I think, I think them removing that name is why. Second straight, two, two years in the playoffs, and as many years since getting rid of the name. You gotta attribute it to good karma and better defense because they've been getting better on defense. Um, Chiefs won Sunday Night Football against Denver. Uh. Washington's win was against uh, the Raiders, so they're kind of falling a bit, but the AFC playoff log jam still exists. Um, but it's going to be interesting. These final five weeks are going to be very interesting, to say the least. So, um, with that... Oh! I have to bring this up. It's not really that important, but we actually have, we actually have an elimination in the... Uh, in the NFL season, the Houston Texans, the Hartwell Houston Texans, became the first team to be eliminated from playoff contention. 
They were shut out at I think it was at home. They were shut out by the Colts, thirty one nothing. And then at two and ten, Houston's playoff aspirations, if they even had any, are officially gone. Uh, the, the 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 turmoil for that team continues. It kind of began it kind of began with that bad playoff choke. They were up twenty four nothing and somehow lost by twenty. Uh, thanks to Bill O'Brien's weird decision making, and then the following year they start zero and was it five zero and six, and they fire him. Mid, they fire him during the season, and then Deshaun Watson. Nothing more needs to be seen, said there. It, 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 it's a complete mess for the Houston Texans, and it may get worse. It may get worse. But yeah, so Houston is so so Houston, not Detroit. Houston's the first team eliminated, and Houston's the first team eliminated because I think I think it's because of how different the conferences are. Uh, the records in the NFC are a bit are a bit lower standard. Like I said, six. Like I said there are two six and six teams in the playoff position in the NFC. That wouldn't get it to AFC, which which is exactly why which is exactly why the one ten and one Lions are mathematically in fact emphasis on mathematically alive, but they'll be eliminated probably next week. But at least they got their first win. So again, congratulations to the Lions. Good job. So that's my review of week number thirteen. Week number I've I've, I've noticed this since I was a teenager. Week thirteen, all all sorts of crazy things happen. Week thirteen. It never fails, <laughs> and um, and uh, this week was no exception. And now we're on to week fourteen as the month of December progresses. Week fourteen kicks off in Minnesota. Steelers play the Vikings, so that's another win for the Steelers. <laughs> Steelers were improved. Steelers were improved seven five and one. Congratulations to them. Uh, and of course, especially we know the news. Uh, Big Ben looks like he's going to hang it up. Great quarterback. Great, uh, great quarterback. Love seeing him. Love watching him from all those years. Um, hell of a talent. He'll definitely. He's definitely going to Canton. Definitely. <laughs> and it'll be well deserved. But um, anyway, so uh, he'll lead the Steelers in a big blowout win over the Vikings because, of course, he will. Um, Dallas plays Washington. I, I should have mentioned this earlier. Washington's schedule is very interesting. Washington has five games left, but they're all in the division. Isn't that something? Talk about, talk about a good chance to actually gain ground and possibly win the division again. Five games left all in the division. Two against Dallas, two against Philly, and one more against the Giants. Giddy up. <laughs> um, okay, the Chiefs and the Raiders face off. You know, that's always good. Um... Falcons face the Panthers. I think the, whoever loses will probably be screwed. Not eliminated, but just screwed. Uh, Ravens and Browns face off for, I think, the second time in three weeks. So don't finish that season series. Uh, the Lions go to make it back-to-back -back wins. Back-to-back -back wins for the Lions? We don't know. The uh, Lions go to make it back-to-back -back wins when they face the Broncos. Uh, the Buccaneers host the Bills. And Sunday Night Football... Sunday Night Football is... The Bears Packers game or <laughs> Oh poor Bears. Bears fans should just wear a blindfold. They don't want to see all that. And uh Monday Night Football is Rams and Cardinals. That's gonna be good. That is gonna be that's gonna be off the chain. That is. It's gonna be close and gritty. Um so that's my recap of week thirteen. I'll be back to re I will recap the division finals of the CFL uh, sometime this week. So I will get on that. But um if you like this video, click the like button, click subscribe if you want more. My story on Vocal, which actually became a top story um, on the site but, uh, about week 13, will be in the description below, so check it out when you can. Uh, I will, and I'll be back with some more material on YouTube very shortly, so stay tuned. And again, congratulations, Lions.